Welcome everyone, Quistine here with my essential unit guide for the Warriors of Chaos for Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires covering the units that you would ideally recruit in every single army. I say ideally because due to the way the Warriors of Chaos recruit, you may end up in quite a few situations where you're recruiting just what is available at that moment in a particular region, especially if you want to build an army very, very quickly, either because of an emergency situation or because you want to attack on a particular sector of the campaign. But if you're building an ideal army, here are the things you should be aware of. Now, with the Warriors of Chaos, you do have different gods and you have undivided. Everyone has undivided units, and depending on the legendary lord you're playing, you may be restricted to one god or another, or you may have access to all of them. Like, there's four legendary lords that have access to all the unit types, and those are Archeon, Bellicor, Colic, and Sigvolt, who isn't a Slanish legendary lord, but it undivided one though he has a Solanishi favor and then you of course have the champions of chaos so you are looking at uh, Valkia, Festus, Village, and Azazel. But when we're looking at the various units and the marks of chaos well I'm going to use the Marauders to demonstrate. Marauders have a low level of armor but they do have a bronze shield with 60 leadership. They're pretty crap in battle but you want you need to get them in order to unlock the Warriors of Chaos themselves, and then eventually Chosen. And with the Marauders, I have all the variants of Marauders, or the basic variants. Now keep in mind that there is a dual weapon one, there is a great weapon one, there is a spear version, etc. But just looking at the differences between the Marauders when it comes to the Marks of Chaos, just to use them for that particular purpose, uh, with Corn you get the Mark of Corn, which gives you the Frenzy ability, Spell Resistance, but it reduces melee defense. Now, Frenzy, the way it works, if your leadership is higher than 50% base, then you get a bunch of melee benefits and immune to psychology. But you need to have higher than 30 leadership, because the base value of leadership is 60. Uh, with Marauders of Slanesh, with the Mark of Slanesh, you get immune to psychology by default. It's not just tied to Frenzy. You get the Strider attribute, which ignores terrain penalties. Uh, you get physical resistance, 5% physical resistance, and increased speed. So these guys have 5 more speed than the base ones. Um, when you're looking at Nurgle, well, Nurgle Marauders have the mark of Nurgle, or Nurgle units have the mark of Nurgle, which causes poison attacks, have higher HP, and melee defense, but at the cost of melee attack. In general, Nurgle is the go-to infantry choice, especially when you're dealing with uh, sieges, Nurgle will win out. And even in field battles, just the increased durability that Nurgle has is really the way to go. Like, if you're building an ultimate infantry line, Nurgle is your option, if you have access to it. If you don't have access to it, Undivided can work, and I'll explain why Undivided as opposed to, say, Corn or others. But to be fair, there are benefits, of course, with dedication to a particular god, even if you don't have access to Nurgle. And the benefit is because of the mark, but you have to weigh in the various strengths of a unit. And then you have Tsinch. The mark of Tsinch gives you barrier and magical attacks. Now, magical attacks give you um, benefit in melee against heavily armored uh, units in particular, even though you may not have armor piercing. So those are the, uh, the different types, the different marks of chaos. There is an additional split with cavalry, because cavalry units with Slanesh have Devastating Flanker, and what Devastating Flanker does is it doubles the charge bonus of a particular unit, so it makes uh, any kind of cavalry unit far more powerful when they're flanking compared to the baseline unit. So Slanesh is the king of cav cavalry, Nurgle is the king of infantry. Though again, there's other benefits as well to keep in mind uh, when it comes to other infantry choices. Now, in every Warriors of Chaos campaign, the units you want to get as quickly as possible are going to be the Chaos Warriors themselves. The two versions I would bother with, unless you're with uh, with Corn, but the two versions I would bother with, you either have the regular Chaos Warriors, which have a silver shield and very solid leadership and melee stats, so they'll stand up to virtually every early game unit, and these can be acquired fairly early in the game. 
or the Great Weapon version, which loses the Silver Shield, but does gain most of the damage from Armor Piercing. You do have dual weapons with Corn. you do have Halberds as well, but typically speaking, the best version of the Warriors of Chaos, or the Chaos Warriors themselves, that I tend to use, are actually the Undivided uh, Chaos Warriors with Grey Weapons. If you want to go with Chosen, like if you want to dedicate to a particular god, I would wait until you get Chosen, because that's the point where you may want to make that choice. Like, these guys are just flat, like the Grey Weapon ones, the Undivided ones, for any Legendary Lord, are just going to be better than any Marked ones, with the exception of Nurgle. Keep that in mind. Um, then there's also, for Undivided, you have Armored Chaos Trolls. Now, Armored Chaos Trolls, while they don't have the best leadership, they're incredibly well armored, and they will be a great Siege Breaker, which is actually an important ability to have as Chaos. They have Siege Attacker trait. Chaos does have the, uh, the ability of breaking down walls through Shatterstone, but just sending in Trolls, ca Armored Chaos Trolls, through the breaches in the walls or through breaches in the gates, is what's going to win you the sieges, far more so than even the Chaos Warriors. Though, you don't want to go with too many trolls, I'd say I'd max it out probably at four trolls, or you can make an entire stack of trolls if you're playing Colic in particular, uh, but usually speaking, a combination of trolls and Chaos Warriors will do fantastic for you in the early game. Those are just the early game units, so you get Marauders, you get Chaos Warriors, you get armored cast trolls then you start talking about like late game uh, later game stuff well one of the late game units that you want to get are the aspiring champions the reason you want to get the aspiring champions and you may want to get the entire stacks of these guys is as you're unlocking things in the research tree especially as undivided you get a significant amount of benefits to these guys by default they're silver shield they've got magical attacks they have a high level of leadership they have encourage and you can actually recruit these far easier than it is to actually upgrade the marauders into cast warriors so getting yourself a bunch of aspiring champions can turn the tide of a lot of battles and as you get all those upgrades through the research tree that you will naturally gravitate towards these guys become sub sub substantially more powerful than they are by default so these are kind of like your end game infantry far more so than anything else but they can be limited uh, in quantity and they are difficult to rank up but you also have a significant benefit in terms of just getting uh, a bunch of them in various regions with high levels of cast corruptions and dark fortresses. And so making a lot uh, stacks with a lot of these guys is actually quite very viable. In terms of artillery, you do have two options. The Hell Cannon is the artillery that everyone has access to. It's powerful in field battles, it's powerful in sieges, it does a lot of damage. And the way its shots work is that line of sight issues are less of a problem which uh, line of sight issues can be a significant issue for quite a few artillery options then you also have the skull cannons while skull cannons aren't necessarily a great artillery option the ammunition issue is a problem like they just don't have enough ammunition they're more like a mainly <laughs> mainly artillery option really like you're you're really you're you can fire this while moving you can throw them in melee uh, you can regenerate HP while in melee it, and, and replenish ammunition while in melee. So yes, it is an art, melee artillery option, but it still will do the job in sieges. So if you can get skull cannons, you should probably do so. You do have to talk about the gifts of chaos because there are limited gifted slots in every single army. What do you want to fill those up with? Well, I would say getting two hull cannons and two skull cannons is probably the way to go in a lot of armies, though not in every case. Having at least two artillery units in every army, though, is my, is highly recommended for every single army you do have. Uh, then you have the cast War Shrines, one of the few other units that are actually worth picking up through the Gifts of Chaos, though not all of them. So, the baseline uh, cast War Shrine don't bother with it. It does give you courage, but you already have good enough leadership. It does give you, so it gives you courage, it gives you leadership for allies uh, in melee, causes fear, you don't really care about that, increases your physical resistance in 35 meters up to 25, 20% for allies. But I don't think really this is worth it. So throw this away. This is a baseline version. You don't really want it. What you do want, however, are some of the dedicated ones. Uh, specifically, what you may want is Slanish, 
Horn, and Nurgle. Let's go over the differences between uh, these three. So for Slanesh, you get a really powerful ability with the giver of Torturous Glory. So with every kill in, or with every entity death near this particular cast war shrine, you start doing more and more damage to combatants, like up to 24 damage per second. This is basically a master rune of spite that Chaos does have. It is pretty solid. It does also have the leadership benefit as well, but it's really the damage, the damn master on a spite effect that it makes it worth it. Uh, then for corn, uh, then for corn, you do have it with frenzy. You do have encourage leadership and the leadership benefit, but quite importantly, you get the R effect of the giver of furious glory, which gives allies in range. A benefit of up to 15% base weapon damage, armor piercing damage, and melee attack. Again, this is pretty powerful, like uh, like the Slanesh one. And then finally, you have Nurgle. If you're going with a lot of single entities, and you may in an army, uh, then the Nurgle cast for shrine can be very worth it because this gives you heal per second. That's the main benefit for it. Like, only really use it if you're going with a lot of single entities, which you can. Otherwise, don't necessarily bother with it, like Sunish and Corn are the go-to most of the time. Um, the, the basic one is not worth it, and Nurgle is like specialized for certain uh, situations. Now, in terms of like endgame units beyond the aspiring champions, you do of course have Chosen. But which Chosen to use? Well, the Chosen that everyone should pick up, every Legendary Lord, should pick up. The ones that are actually worth it in a lot of ways are the chosen with gray weapons. You could obviously specialize, depends on your authority, right? So if you've got a lot of Sonishi authority, not so much undivided, like if you're playing Sigvald, obviously getting the basic chosen, which are just like uh, regular chosen with the mark of Sonishi, that may be worth it, but keep, um, keep in mind the advantage of the chosen with gray weapons. They are one of the best, actually, Probably the best infantry unit in the entire game. Most of the damage is armor piercing damage. You can use the halberd version, the undivided version. You can obviously switch around between these uh, three different versions. But most of the time, you should either use the gray weapons, or if you're dealing with a substantial amount, like let's say you're invading Wolf One, if you're dealing with a substantial amount of ranged units, then you may want to go with ch chosen with the silver shield as opposed to the gray weapons. Depends on what you're facing, but the vast majority of time, chosen with gray weapons are the way to go. They are far better than the other versions. And even if you're playing someone like Valkia or Village or anything like that, it might be worth it. Maybe not for their army, because obviously they get a lot of authority for that particular god. But for other armies, getting a bunch of chosen with gray weapons is worth it. The only exception when it comes to dedication is Nurgle, because Nurgle gets the gray weapon version. Nurgle is the only god that gets the gray weapon version of chosen so obviously his are going to be better because they're going to have better more hp and that makes them a superb infantry unit to use but regular chosen gray weapons will work just as well i'll say you can obviously go with specialized if you're going to a lot of infantry and you get say a lot of scene authority you can obviously specialize with that just keep in mind with specialization that you can always specialize in a god, but you can't go back. Like, once you've dedicated yourself to a particular god, there's no going back from that. So remember that kind of uh, decision-making. Because Undivided always has the flexibility of having all the types. Like, you have halberds, you have shields, you have gray weapons, and you can swap them around on the in the campaign. If you go for a particular god, your choices are going to be far more limited. In particular, Slanish has the worst chosen in the game uh, because you just basically get two different versions of the shielded one and well hell scourges are not necessarily great they've 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 become better than they were but i rarely i never see a reason to bother with it unless i have an army with a ridiculous high level of slanish authority and less undivided authority but undivided authority should be pretty high in every army regardless uh then cavalry choices obviously you do have the um Blood Crushers of of Corn. You do have the Doom Knights of Teach, but Chaos Knights with lances, not the regular ones, but the lance version is the way to go. 
or uh, the Dandavida version will do well, any dedicated god will do well, but the premier cavalry unit of Chaos are the Chaos Knights of Sunnish with lances because of the devastating flanker effect they have. So they'll have up to 120 charge bonus if they're hitting enemy from the rear uh, or the flank. So, and this is since this is the way you want to use cavalry, this give, makes these guys substantially more powerful than the regular versions. Though their baseline charge bonus is 20 less, um, but they are the fastest unit and if you do get a flank attack with these guys they'll do the most amount of charge damage of any unit that chaos does have in its entire roster and then talking about the demons because you do have limited gifts of chaos slots in an army so some of them like chaos war shrines consume one so you, you probably just want to limit yourself to one chaos war shrine per army two hell cannons maybe get two skull cannons if you so desire or maybe not maybe you just want to get two free demons in every army uh, that you're using but which demons should you go for well the greater demons of course the big ones don't waste your time on the basic ones blood letters if you can get exalted blood letters as bellacor sure but outside of that don't bother with any of the basic demons they're not worth it and say save your slots for the big ones so the blood letters the keeper of secrets the great unclean one the dragon of Gorshagoths, and uh the lord of change this is by the way why undivided is the most powerful of all the cast gods because you get all of these now you're not just limited to dragon ogres and say lords of change if you're playing a siege no you can get all of these in a particular army hell you might forgo um you might forgo the artillery completely in certain armies and just go with all of these or get rid of one of them like the keeper of secrets get four of these fellows or deal, get rid of the dragon over shagov uh keep in mind something about souls you obviously only have a limited number of souls and you can only have so many gifts active when it comes to getting units, I would always prioritize getting Hell Cannons as much as possible with Undivided as opposed to bothering with Dragon Ogre Shagups. Though you're probably going to build up a lot of souls with Undivided far more so than anything else, so you may unlock quite a few Dragon Ogre Shagups during the course of your campaign. But it does take time. It is pretty expensive, by the way. I'd rather get a lot more Hell Cannons in my campaign than get Dragon Ogre Shagups. Uh, with Undivided and focus on getting fl things like Bloodthirsters. Like, if I were to pick any demon, like, yeah, Bloodthirsters went out just because they can fly and they're really powerful in melee as well. Far, uh, far more so than, say, Lords of Change in melee, though uh, Lords of Change do have those spells. Finally, when it comes to hero and lore choices, there really aren't any choices. You get two hero types and uh, two lore types, but here's what I would say with respect to that. Uh, how you specialize should depend on the authority that you're going for like what is your army made up of like if you're going with the corn army get a lord and hero of corn or get the lord at least and then you can obviously make a demon prince from uh from the one leading the army and you can specialize with the gods uh, with heroes but here's the thing about chaos. You're always going to get a lot of chaos sorcerers, uh, sorcerers in a campaign because increasing capacity is very easy and the structure you're doing it from is something you're going to want to build in every Dark Fortress because it increases your income in that Dark Fortress by quite a, quite a significant amount. So usually when it comes to leading an army, I vastly prefer getting chaos lords as opposed to sorcerer lords. And this is generally the case with every other factions as well. A faction as well. I prefer to rely on the magic of the heroes as opposed to the magic of the lords because I have skills that I want to spend on improving the army, their melee ability, other things. I don't want to waste skill points on improving the magical ability of a lord when I can just do that with a hero and not have to sacrifice in other departments. That is my personal perspective on that. And when it comes to the uh, decision between like a melee lord or a, Mary, a melee hero the melee lord will generally win out against any melee hero in the game i don't think there is any melee hero in the game that's better than the lord choice but the mage choice like well the mage hero choice can be just as good as uh, in terms of casting magic as any lord choice so that is 
part of it, but also because the you will have far more li more limited melee heroes in your campaign playing as cast than you will mages. And that's all there is to say. Questine here signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications, and stay tuned for more.